there are a number of payment processing platforms out there. Probably the biggest one that most people are familiar with is PayPal, uh, but Stripe is a, another very big payment processor. Uh, and the reason that I've tended to use Stripe for uh, buy sites is that it's it's simple um, and it it's worked. You know, I've put an awful lot of payments through on uh, on the platform, and they've just worked. You don't get any errors or any any issues with arising. With what I found with PayPal is that people get a little bit confused when they use it, where it pops up saying, "Have you got a PayPal account?" "No." "Have you? Do you want a PayPal account?" "Yes." "No, I don't." "Do you want to pay by credit card?" And it gets very confusing. So what I found is with Stripe, it just works straight away, um, and it's, um, it's it's ready ready to go. So um, like all payment processors, they do charge. So what they're doing is they're taking the payments in from the credit cards aggregating all those payments during the day session and then sending a bulk payment to your uh, client's business account with uh, less their, their commission fees. So it's a very straightforward business model. So if you go on to the next slide, Jim. Um, yeah, there you go. Okay. Right, so uh, one of the first things to do is when you're getting set up is agree with your client that they're gonna use Stripe as the, uh, the payment processor you know, that sort of uh, the reason being that they are the person in charge of the, uh, the Stripe account. So when it's active, they will see all their payments going through. So they would be an active user of the, of the platform. Uh, and similarly, they'll need uh, to provide all their bank account details as well. Um, and sort of, you know, their sort of, um, you know, their limited company, company names and that sort of stuff. So make sure that your client gets that set up uh, before you start work. Don't do it on their behalf because you'll get yourself into uh, into an awkward position where suddenly you become you know their their um, their go-to person and that's not what you want. So get them to set it up in the first instance and then ask the client to uh, make you a developer. Then they can drop out of the uh, the equation while you're doing all the development work. Uh, so that's that's a, a sort of important thing to do when you're first starting. Okay, next slide. Okay. So once you've got the account set up, now there's quite a lot of other things in there, but I just really wanted to concentrate this evening. I know we've got sort of a sort of limited amount of time, but the bits you just need to be aware of when you're setting up your, um, your connection between your, um, your, your site, your WordPress and Elementor site and the Stripe platform. So there's two things here. There's the, what the API keys there. So when you um, enable your, uh, your, your, service on Stripe, there's API keys. Now the ones that you want in the first instance are your test keys. And there's two of those, there's the publishable key and the secret key. And then once you've got everything up and working correctly, uh, you can then, uh, there's also a set of live keys as well. So it's very good from the perspective of actually allowing you to uh, check everything's working in the test environment. You can put test payments through, you can see them appear at the other end from your uh, your payment page right the way through to your your test account um, so it's, it's a very useful tool and then once you're happy and the client's happy that everything's ready to go it's just a very simple case of then switching over to, to the live keys um, so uh, yep if you could Neil go to the next slide please Jim so the other thing to create is your webhooks now what the webhook does it connects your site to the um, to the platform and all you have to do is on the right hand side there you see where it's got to uh, add webhook web hook endpoint so just add your your url there um, and then what events you want to send backwards and forwards to the site um, and then that allows uh, stripe to communicate with your site uh, securely and at that point you've now got the the basics set up so you've got connection between your site You've got your keys ready to install into WordPress, which we'll look at in a moment. Um, and you've got your, your webhooks for information to travel between the two entities. Okay, next slide, Jim. Okay, so on the, this is the uh, Stripe Payments plugin. Uh, you can install, yeah, it's a free, uh, free plugin, of course. Um, so there, at the top there, you've got your checkout results page URL. So what that does is that it actually, um, allows you to sort of have a page that comes up when you've uh, when your uh, your customer has um, completed their transaction that can be any sort of free form what I've got there 
in fact, is that uh, this particular residence association, what we do there is that the Stripe checkout results comes up. But in fact, what it is, it's, um, um, it's, it's uh, which one is it now? Um, but primarily, it's uh, it gets the the, uh, the resident's name and address. So it's uh, a ninja forms that comes up. So they complete the form. Previously, they've made the payment. But after they made the payment, it goes to that checkout results page, um, and then you can decide whatever it is that you want to do. Uh, then on the next setting, uh, you uh, yep. Yeah, so um, set, can you go to one, please, Jim? That's it. That's it. Okay. So. Um, then you've got, uh, if you want to send an email receipt from Stripe or from your um, from yourself, what I do, I actually turn that one off because otherwise you get two receipts and that's a little bit, again, from the confusion perspective. You know, some of my old dears around here, you know, they get a little bit confused, so they get two things. So I turn that one off and then I send that text that you can see at the bottom there, that's what I actually send to the, um, to the resident. So I put the subscription paid, so that's a, uh, a field that gets automatically populated and I put the transaction ID in as well. So that just sort of has the information that Stripe sends, but it's all in one place in one message. Okay, uh, next one, please, Jim. All right. Uh, cool. That's it. So, so that's sort of uh, the next thing is to look at is to add a new product. So this is a subscription service. So what I've done here, I've added the text that I want to actually have that product. So it's titled 2020 membership year. Um, and then on that uh, uh, box there, I've added the text of why you want to do that. You can't actually see on this uh, slide, but there is actually sort of, uh, there's more sort of buttons and things you can you can add in there. Thing to also note there is that you've got that embed product short code on the side there, where it's highlighted. Um, so that's sort of, uh, you need to, make a note of that when you're actually adding that to your Elementor page. But uh, further down the page, yeah, there's sort of quantities, links that if there's a digital download, it might be a, you know, a digital book you're selling or something. And also if it's a physical product, then sort of billing and delivery addresses as well. But that's all on that sort of products page uh, that's all part of the Stripe um, uh, plugin. Okay, next page, Jim. So now what I've done, uh, this is creating a page you know, you're all familiar with this. Uh, so what you then need to do is just add a short code to the page. Um, and then that code there, you can see it says 4049 is the short code. So that's sort of just literally cut and pasted into that. And then if you press the apply button, you go to the next page, Jim, then that which we saw in that product page is now appearing on that uh, page. So on that customer's uh, site, they'll see the title of the page, 2020 membership year, and the content that you've uh, you've placed there as well. So, it, and of course you can, if you want to add other things as well on that page, you know, maybe images or whatever, you know, that standard Elementor stuff, you know, click and add the, add the box as you, as you, as you need. But it's a very simple just to add that short code. Okay, Jim, next one. Okay, so what's that look like in the sort of live page? So now if I, page, uh, that page comes up and there on that green box, it's sort of hidden, but um, normally that would be just uh, sort of normal. It's not uh, dark. You just sort of say, yes, I want to pay. And then that dialogue box comes up and that's the, takes the customer's email address, their card number and the uh, credit card details and the pay five pounds, which is what that subscription is. So when you're in your test mode, you can use the credit card number 4242 um, and any expiry date that's in the future and CV number. And then when you click on that pay five pounds, it will actually put that transaction through and it will appear in two places. It'll appear in the order section on your, on your website and it will also appear in the Stripers, Stripe account as well. So when you're ready, um, can you just go back a couple of slides, Jim? Um, let me just check them while I'm here. Keep going. Yeah, so uh, one more. That's it. Uh, oh, sorry, one more. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, so in the live node there where that's highlighted, normally you'd have that unchecked while you're doing your development. You just enable that when you're ready to go live. And then that uh, that is where your, your keys reside. So when you're 
putting your, um, I think I actually missed this slide, but primarily that's where the keys go in that area. So when you're doing your development, have that live mode switched off, but still add your add your keys in. Uh, so there are the two sets. One is a publisher key. I won't talk about keys now. That's another world of interest if you're interested in key exchange, but primarily that you just add those keys to the uh, to the to your um, uh, Stripe uh, uh, plugin, and then you're you're ready to go. So I think in five minutes I've probably done that. So yeah, I think that was it. Yeah. Phew. Okay. Thank you very much, Les. Uh, so, I'm guessing you've got some pretty uh, strict uh, data control kind of warnings on your site somewhere there saying. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I say. The important th thing to note is that you don't, and which we put in, that we don't hold any any credit card details. Mm. So although that, that box coming up isn't on the website, it's coming from, from Stripe, and that's why it's uh, we don't see any of that. All, all we've got is a tra transaction ID. And in fact, even when you go into your Stripe account, you won't see any credit card details at all. So that's, that's all secure uh, from that perspective. Uh, it goes without saying as well that your site should be HTTPS secure site um, yeah. as you're handling transactions. Uh, but that works very well, sort of taking a payment up front, uh, and then you can sort of do other things with the uh, uh, once that transaction has, has been processed and approved, then you can fire off emails to you know what the orders are and uh, uh, those type of things in different directions. But primarily, they're just sort of for this session, just to sort of have a look at the actual. Uh, way that you set up the Stripe um, account in the first instance. Those key that we looked at are the important bits that you need both those sets um, and similarly the webhook as well. If you don't have those in, then uh, you won't be able to uh, to do your development. Thank you so much for that, Les. I think this has been an amazing event. Again, we're having people asking about the